I love what I do. It's been wonderful to be with Red River Human Services and the dedication to helping everyone succeed, to try to get your questions answered, try to get the help you need. It's remarkable. It makes a difference in people's lives. There's always something new and interesting to do. The, the challenges that come from day-to-day -day work, but working with the people who come up with the new ideas and, and the way people pitch in and help each other. With, whether it's something serious or, or something fun, we have people who are there to help celebrate, to, to commiserate, to recognize when someone's having a bad day, and they can help make it better. What we do is residential services. We have homes that we own where people live. We also have apartments where people live. In addition to residential services, we also provide day services. Day services include pre-vocational programs where people are not quite ready for jobs yet. We also have vocational programs where people get jobs, they get paid for what they do. And then we have some people that are retired or just not interested in working. So we run the gamut 24 hours a day in terms of our services. I have the best of all worlds in a job is that I, I see the, the raw data in its true form and how people are doing uh, in the program programs that they're doing by achieving objectives and that type of data, but I also get to see the success, success stories that people have uh, along the way. That truly, really to me, is the quality that we're providing is those success stories and, and making it about the individual and the things that they really want to succeed in. Red River Human Services Foundation is very unique. Uh, many providers across the state not only provide services to people with intellectual disabilities, but they've expanded very greatly into other arenas. And what we have done is we focus just purely on people with intellectual disabilities, both what they do residentially, during the day, whatever their concerns are is what we focus on. And because of that, we have a narrower focus. We're able to provide greater supports. We have happy families. We have great appreciation from the state because we're solely focused on people with intellectual disabilities. We are willing to look at what's going on and then work with people. What, what's going on in your life and how can we help? This past spring we had a, a woman who had a real struggle going on and she felt like we would give up on her like everybody else always has. And her team members told her, no, we're here for you. We don't like what happened, but we care about you and we're here for you. And that's remarkable. In 2008, uh, we purchased uh, a uh, store uh, in Breckenridge, Minnesota, uh, and that store was used for a thrift store because people with disabilities needed support during the day, and uh, they come in and they help collect clothes and help sort and help on the sales floor, and they get paid for what they do, and that was a wonderful project that we built. It is still doing very, very well today. The mission, it's changed in its wordage um, a little bit over the years, but the, the mission has always been there to help people, um, to help people that are um, in needing of some type of service. Um, but its goal has always been providing the best quality services um, to the people that we support. The one that touches my heart the most is my trips to the two state institutions in San Haven and in Grafton to see how people lived before the lawsuit in the early 80s and even after the lawsuit and going into the facilities and looking at the small rooms that they have, mattresses on the floor if they have a mattress, the windows if they have windows in their bedrooms are up high, brick walls, the quality of life was horrible and how we as providers across the state have been able to move people out of the institutions and into the community to better their life. When we've gone up there to interview people that were interested in our services, having parents come down, tour our facilities, and they're so impressed with not only the facilities, but the commitment from staff, the blessings that staff give to everyone that we have. And so my memorable stories really fall back on the state institutions, the poor quality of life, and how we have, as providers, greatly have improved it. There's so many different people to work with. It keeps it interesting. And the foundation, from, from the board to, to the very part-time direct service professional, we learn what we're doing. We, we are dedicated to supporting our mission. That's in our job descriptions. Uh, we're there to make a difference in people's lives, 
And that's rewarding in itself. When you assist somebody to succeed in their life, it makes work great. There is a story about a couple that are married and they were told years ago that no, this would never happen. But they loved each other so much they were able to get married and now they're living together. They are out working independently, both have independent jobs, they have their own apartment. Years ago when the institutions were around, this never would have happened. But thanks to the willingness, not only the people we support, the two individuals and their family members, but our staff were willing to make whatever changes were needed to make it work for both of them. They're very happy people. Um, the future, I see us continuing to be a leader in providing the quality services for people that we support and uh, it's continued growth and um, by providing the best quality services that we can. Something I often point out to people is the strength of our services is in the direct support professionals on the grassroots level, uh, doing the work day to day, um, getting people through the highs and lows in their lives. We're very good at that. It's a life-changing event because it improves the quality of their lives, makes them happy, makes the parents happy, and overall, it's just a great change for the person we support.